Okay, so it looks like back in April, I explored Half-Life Alex. I still remember basically what happened, what I was doing at the time. So I'm going to go back and review some of the old footage with some commentary to explain what I thought was interesting and the things that I was trying to record from. So here we go. Okay, so one of the first things that I noticed in Half-Life Alex was that there was actually a usable whiteboard of sorts built into a few places in the game. And it was particularly impressive when this whiteboard sort of system was available on a transparent surface, which was textured. I think the glass was actually three-dimensional. It wasn't a simple transparent texture. So you had something that looked highly realistic and was actually more useful than just a blank white whiteboard in virtual reality. It certainly had better contrast, certainly had a lot better readability. And of course, what do I do when I'm given a whiteboard program to play around with? I start drawing a transistor schematic symbol because that's one of the things that's useful to sketch on a two-dimensional surface. Okay, so here obviously I found a clipboard and decided to try seeing if I could use the same pens on the clipboard. That was no-go. Now this door, this door really has a very slick way of moving. Actually, I take that back. It's not slick so much as it gives you the feeling of an actually heavy door. The notable part of this scene is the reflection off the water in virtual reality that was extraordinarily impressive. Now, this really shows how much scripting went into the objects that were put into Half-Life Alex. You actually expect a broom to be usable to sweep up the leaves. Here it obviously doesn't sweep up the leaves, but it does sweep up other stuff on the ground. The vegetation, the detail in the vegetation with the AKX headset and VR is stunning. The edges were absolutely sharp. And here we find even the trash cans can be open. The pill bottle that's on the ground is Functional, you can hear the pills inside. I thought I'd try to open that pill box, I guess not. Um, also, the... I think I missed the opportunity to show this in the video, but these mailboxes, I think that's what they are, they actually open. They're actually functional. You can grab them and open them up. So, practically everything that can be scripted and have like... Alex does actually have scripted physics. You can see why Half-Life Alex costs a lot of money to develop. I think here I was testing the ability to pull objects out from underneath the fencing there, which obviously does work. I think that with practice I actually was able to get much better at solving these kinds of physics problems in Half-Life Alex and use the controls effectively. Also, the contrast was impressive. Uh, the, um, the optics of being able to use a flashlight that was mounted to your hands like that was very useful. Also, I had parallel projections turned off. I don't think I ever applied any of the fixes, so I did tend to see a bit of a bad texture in the wrong place when there were slime effects. I didn't find any immersion breaking. I found the slime effects and whatnot plenty disturbing, so I did not really need to, um, to change that. I'm not sure what I'm looking at there. Rule of three, I think there were three different keys or something, typical video game mechanic. That door handle was impressively convincing. Now here I test that you can put an object on top of another object. In this case, the small yellow thing is on top of the big blue box. 
And it's always impressive when a video game engine handles the physics of the situation correctly instead of one of the objects falling through the other object or something like that. I think that if I let the object go in some way, yeah, here, ah, okay, so if I grab the object, I move the character around physically, I'm able to defeat the physics engine and the object that's on top of the object that I'm holding while I'm moving around doesn't update. Uh, yes, the 3D printer sort of thingy. Some of the gadgets in Half-Life Alex are so much more impressive in VR that they defy description of how impressive they are. There is, however, one exception. The red dot or holographic sight, whatever it is, that can be fitted onto the weapons in Half-Life Alex is very unimpressive, at least on the AKX, because you can tell that certain aspects of Alex were specifically made for 90 hertz refresh rate or 120 hertz, whatever the index refresh rate is. Also, it wasn't a very practical holographic site. It was designed to be impressive to show off the refresh rate of the index. It wasn't designed to be practical or useful or refresh or useful device. Uh, this I think I'm showing that the performance of Half-Life Alex is really quite good, uh, well below the threshold of needing smart smoothing. Even having tweaked the super sampling and whatnot to get what I would expect for something like a 1.4 times total super resolution. Obviously that's very impressive being able to break the glass in many different ways there. Now this is particularly impressive. You can play the piano notes not just by touching the piano keys but also by grabbing an object and dragging it across or otherwise interacting with the piano keys. And that shows the extent of the physics engine and how well it handles the scripting. And yeah, the piano notes, I'm not a piano player, but I think it's fairly convincing. And I think that if somebody was a piano player who played this, nice. Yeah, I think somebody would find that all the right piano notes were there. That drop where the ashtray is dropped onto the piano keys, I think it's particularly impressive how well Half-Life Alex handles that. Okay, so some notes about this video. This video was undoubtedly taken from footage that was obtained while using the not final AKX unit. That said, I don't think I would have seen anything noticeably different using the production AKX headset, except that having the mass certainly makes it a little bit more comfortable. Uh, also, I think it's worth mentioning that Half-Life Alex overall, while very impressive, isn't quite my type of thing. I prefer more uh, open world sort of games or multiplayer games or flight simulation stuff like that to sort of room by room single player experiences. Half-Life Alex did seem kind of linear to me but then again they clearly went through a lot of work to script almost every object in this game. There was obviously a lot of development into creating very detailed environments. Obviously it's a 
very compelling example of what a VR experience can be and certainly shows a lot of what we hope to see in the future in virtual reality.